Hi, it's Laura here from iHeart Planners, and today I want to show you a little bit about how I use ConvertKit and why it is my favorite email list provider. Like I've said, I've tried others, and this by far um, has excelled everything I've tried. Um, this does go along with a coordinating blog post, so um, be sure to click the link below to see the blog post that goes along with this. I just want to sh point out a few things I talked about in the post because sometimes it's easier if you can like actually see it um, rather than me just trying to explain it in words. So the first thing I said that I love about ConvertKit is you can have as many opt-ins as you want and it's all still one list. There's no complicated multiple lists and all that stuff. So I want to show you how easy it is. Um, this is like what I see when I first log in. It gives me a little um, stats about, you know, kind of a helpful graph for statistics about my subscribers and then next we see all of my forms. I know this is going to look pretty different if you're used to another email service provider. Initially this looks pretty different but as you start using it you'll see why this is so much better and just faster. So if I want to create a new opt-in I just go to create form. I have two options a landing page or a form. We'll do a form. Um, there's different formats. Um, I usually use this one but the others are great too. Um, then it's pretty easy to change elements of the form. So I could put like an image there or I can leave it out. I can put words, um, I can change this, I can change this. Um, I can change what this button says. And the little magic wand, you can change a few colors. So it's just super quick and easy to do that. Um, you can like preview it by clicking this view. Um, next, I'll show you the settings. And this is like what is so, so um, powerful. So you can give it a name, like say I wanted a, um, maybe I'm doing an opt-in for a, I did a post about gardening and I'm gonna do a garden printable. Um, I really know nothing about gardening, so I won't be doing that, but um, you know, just as an example, um, and that's one of the best things you can do is if you have, say you have a post about how to garden, um, maybe your whole blog's not necessarily you know, all to do with gardening, but if you put an option at the bottom saying, here, get this free garden planner printable or something, um, people are, that's gonna convert a lot better than a generic opt-in in the sidebar. Next, um, this is just a form. Um, what happens when your visitor subscribes? You can either show a message, you can customize it, or redirect to another page. So if you have like a thank you page, which is what I typically do, next you can choose, they can be opted into any of the courses that you already have. So it's that easy. So if I had like a follow-up course on, um, you know, an introduction to how to garden or something, you know, I would do that. Or um, I have my Get Organized Once and For All course. Your two options here, which I love. Um, you can either make this course mandatory for all new subscribers so they won't have to opt in or anything like that, um, like that to receive the course. And I do that especially when like, say someone buys one of my Sweet Life planners and I have a follow-up series, giving them some advice on how to print and how to set up their planner. I don't want them to have to opt, like, opt into that. They're automatically gonna get that. Um, you can add existing subscribers to this course or not. I usually, I usually don't, um, but I could see some situations where that might be useful. Next, your incentive email. So you have the option of either sending the double opt-in. Um, so if somebody's just signing up on my site, I do want them to have to click the conf confirm button in their email. But um, if they say purchased a product or something, I don't think that's necessary. Um, if they're already on my list, obviously not necessary. Um, and you can customize the email, um, super quick and easy. The other thing that I love is you have a couple choices here. Um, one thing you could do, you could put a link to the freebie here in the email message, or you could um, put the incentive right there, just upload the file, and as soon as they click confirm your subscription, that file comes to them. Um, so that's a super handy, or they can be redirected to a page that has the freebie. Um, or you have the option to auto confirm new members. Um, you can change some of the styles, I usually do not mess with that. Um, how you embed the form, you can either embed it um, by copying and pasting this, or um, I will show you in a little bit the WordPress plugin that I think is so helpful. Um, I don't usually use, I don't use Twitter, so <laughs> I ignore that part. Um, I also 
Um, don't often use this, but you can duplicate the form if you want something similar. It can kind of start with that or archive it. So if you're not using it anymore, it'll just take it off that view. Um, you could obviously delete the whole thing. I've never, I've never done that. Um, but that's how quick and easy it is to um, set up set up a new opt-in, a new form. That's all there is to it. And they'll just go to your main database. And you can see the subscribers that, obviously if this were live, I would, I would see details about subscribers just for this form, which that's pretty handy. It'll give you conversion rate, things like that. Next thing that I love in general, and this is a little bit harder to demonst demonstrate, but just the general speed and ease of use. You can do everything so fast and so easy. Um, everything you need is right up here, forms, courses, uh, broadcast, that's how you send out a general email. So it just doesn't take a lot of time and fiddling around to do what I need to do. And it, again, it was designed for bloggers, so it kind of is designed for what it is that I need it to do. Um, and I think it being so specified to that is part of what makes it so quick and easy to use. Um, like I said, the form just takes a minute or two. Um, if you wanted to, for example, I'll jump to automations. So if you wanted to, um, this is kind of how the automation works. Um, so anything that happens, so if they subscribe to a course, complete a course, you know, so maybe they complete one course, you want to automatically either tag them um, so you know that, or you can have them um, subscribe to a new course or something like that. Um, so all these different things. So like that form I just created, which I didn't actually save, but let's say, um, when I, whenever they, I don't know. Um, okay, we'll do the budget printable. We'll say um, my budget printable. And then, so anytime anybody subscribes to that form, I either want to subscribe them to a course. And now you can do that right within the form as well, but perhaps you want to subscribe them to another course or something like that. Um, I usually would do that um, from within the form itself. Unsubscribing from a course, that's super handy. Say you have a follow-up series, like if someone clicks... Um, a link to your sales page in an email and you kind of tag them as like interested in this product. And so then you start sending them a follow-up series of emails about, um, about that product because you know they're interested, but when they buy it, you don't want them to keep getting those emails so you can unsubscribe them automatically um, when they buy a project, product, for example. Um, you can subscribe them to a different form, unsubscribe them, add a tag. And so tags I use a lot, like I might say, um, like for example, this might be something I'd actually do. This is like a free budget printable I have on a post about um, how to get organized on a budget. Um, I can select a tag that I already have or create a new tag. Um, and um, maybe I want a tag that says um, something like um, interested in budgeting or something. So I know these people are specifically interested in that topic and I can send out an email about that. So you can just see like how the possibilities are like endless um, with these automations and they're pretty like straightforward and easy to use. Um, so I do love that. Um, okay, now the next thing, I, 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 I think this might be my favorite thing besides the fact that um, no one gets duplicate emails, um, is their, what they call their courses. And different people call this different things. This is either an autoresponder, a drip campaign, um, things like that, where somebody is automatically getting emails on, on a s sequence. Um, all right, so um, here's our courses. And what I love about this is, let's say that this is one of my main courses. Um, people can opt in to get this little, I call it a mini course for how to get organized. Um, so the first email they get in this series is a welcome email. Um, so I just type up the email right here. Um, and it includes their, um, one of their freebies. And then here's the different lessons. So it's this easy to just go in and change things. Whereas in MailChimp, you had to like click into the each um, series, you had to click into each email and then save it. But here I'm just like, okay, let's go change this. Like for example, um, one thing I do in here um, in a couple places, okay, let's let's say here, um, I'm directing them to a Facebook group. Well, let's say I decide I'm, I'm shutting down the Facebook group. Um, instead, I want to direct them um, somewhere else. I could quickly come in here and change each one of these so much faster. Or 
In some of them, I um, I talk about my um, planner, um, and I could easily change. Like here, I talk about the Sweet Life Planner, and I added that it's half price. Um, well, when I take it off of, of um, being half price, I need to come in and change it and say, you'll definitely love a Sweet Life Planner, end of story, because it's not half price anymore. So that's how quick and easy it is. You can also, drafting them is really easy. You can add an email easily just by clicking that. And then do whatever you want. And as long as it's in draft, it will not be sent. So I really like that feature of um, being able to have, have it kind of drafted there. Um, you can drag around the order like this. That easy. Um, so that's just how quick and easy it is. And I, didn't, I don't think I really realized until I um, started using this how, how much that would help me and how I've actually created more courses and improved them more quickly because of how quick and easy it is to get in there and do that. You can also look at um, the settings. Like you can change when it goes out. Um, another thing I love about the courses that I have done at uh, times is um, you can exclude certain subscribers from getting this course. So for example, um, and sometimes I probably do overkill with setting up like a rule and um, excluding subscribers, but say it's like a course that you're trying to get you know, somebody to buy something, well, exclude the purchasers of that product. So you know, whoever's purchased, like to say this product, I could, it's never gonna send it to them. Um, so that's, I think that's pretty, you can duplicate this course also so you have a starting point for another course. Um, and reports will show you um, all your rates on all the emails. So um, that's super handy. Obviously, the first one usually gets by far the highest open rate. <laughs> um, and this actually has a freebie, so that makes a lot of sense. You can see how many people have unsubscribed. Um, as we get later into the course, usually not as many people have received it yet. Um, so that is, I mean, and I have really, I thought about, I just, I thought about showing you how, how, like creating a course in MailChimp and showing you the difference, but I downgraded MailChimp so I don't have um, drip campaigns anymore in there, so um, I couldn't really do that. But I think if you use that, you'll you'll automatically um, see how useful that is. Um, I'll show you again the database concept for subscribers. Amazing. So here's my subscribers. There, there's no, there's no separate lists or anything. There's just a bunch of sub subscribers, and then each subscriber, um, and I'll um, have to have a box around these so you don't see their email addresses. But in each um, subscriber, they they are just tagged with all the different things that they. Um, or subscribe to or whatever. So this person is only subscribed to the Paper Clutter Challenge. Um, she's also in the segment main newsletter. You can look at their individual history. Um, some of them have a ton of more stuff they're subscribed to. Um, also, um, you can create segments. And segments are just a saved grouping of, of the other things. So they're not, they don't change anything. It's just kind of to make it handy for you. Um, and then tags. I have way more tags than I think most people need to have. And that's because of the way I had to import was a little bit messy and all these are not necessary. So I just want you to know, don't be scared. Um, you should not have this many tags. And if you're starting from scratch or you have a much more simple list, you, there's no reason. Um, but you can tag anybody with anything. Um, so like entrepreneur newsletter, I have people tagged. These are in the main newsletter. Um, if they purchase something, I've tagged them. Um, all different types of tagging. Then, whenever you're sending an email, and they're called broadcast, just a normal email, you click on new broadcast. And this is where the beauty of this, like how easy it is to send to exactly who you want. So you can include subscribers from all these different places. Now don't let this, like all the options scare you. You don't need to use them, but you have these options. So if I just wanted people who have, um, Subscribe to the budget, get the budget printable. I could do that. Or um, any combination of forms or courses. So whoever's taken X course, you know, I could, um, any tags or any combination of them or segments in which I, like I said, are already um, saved groupings. So for me, I have a couple segments of things I use regularly. Um, and then you can exclude any subscribers. So I want everyone on my main newsletter who has not yet purchased the Serenity Sweet Life Planner, for example. Um, so that's just how easy it is. Um, then you'd click on next step and you would compose your email right there 
and you can schedule it in the next step. Um, so that's how, how that whole database system works and why it's so powerful for bloggers. Um, I'll show you right quick um, the landing pages because I did talk about that and why I love them and how they're so quick to create. So I'll show you a landing page I already have. Um, <coughs> for example, this one, opening it in a new tab. All right, so this is, um, if you click right here, you'll see what it actually looks like when someone lands on it, which I think is pretty handy. And to get to the link to it, you just, um, whoops, you just copy that. So this is what it looks like. Um, and it's converting pretty well. Um, and it's so easy. So all I did was I just, you just click in there to change those texts. Um, if you leave it empty, of course, it won't show any text there. Change text, you can change the button um, text. And then here's where you just upload any photo that you want. And the little magic wand, you can change a few colors. And that's all there is to it. Like it probably took me three minutes to set up this landing page. Um, so while this definitely does not have nearly as many options as like lead page or something like that, I don't really need that many options. Um, so if you're just wanting to create a real quick landing page, get the job done, it looks good, it works. Um, I like that it has that capability. And I didn't even realize when I signed up, I didn't think I would use it, but I have. And like I said in the blog post, I actually um, threw together a landing page for my paper clutter series. It took me, like I said, like less than five minutes and I ran a Facebook ad to it. It's converting at like nine cents per subscriber, which is a really good, um, good rate. So they work, um, they are proven. So I hope that that helps give you an idea of ConvertKit and how to use it and helps you with your decision of what email service provider to use. And if you're not convinced that you need an email list, um, stick around. <laughs> I will try to convince you because I do think that it is the one of the, at least for me, it has been the biggest thing that I have done right in my business and the biggest thing that has allowed me to create a reliable, um, good full-time income for my family. And um, if you also, if you are totally feeling a little bit overwhelmed or you feel like, well, I think this email list thing sounds great, but I'm not sure how would I get people on it? What would I offer them? How does it all work? Um, uh, in the middle of March, I'll be re releasing a course about how I have grown my email list and exactly what you should do to grow it. Uh, what, what should you do with it? How, how does it make you money? Um, I'm gonna cover all that. I'm gonna cover both um, you know, aspects of the theory behind how you, how you do it. And I'm gonna show you like exactly how you upload a um, freebie to your blog and or how you offer it to them. I'll walk through the technical side of using this software and all of that so you have everything you will need to start or grow your email list. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, um, you can feel free to email me, iheartplanners at gmail.com, and be sure to click the link below to read the blog post.